what is going on everybody welcome back to the world war history bar hope you're all having a great day in today's video we are to go to a place near to our heart we are at the united states air force museum in fairborn ohio it is quite crowded here today so it's going to be difficult to film but we're hoping to be able to film a good amount of this museum yeah it's whew. i mean if you just take a little turn here you can see it is yeah, yeah it's it's, it's, it's crowded way more crowded than we were expecting it's it kind of ridiculous yeah. the parking here sucks. <laughs> but if you guys do want to enjoy this video let us know by dropping a like and subscribing turn on post notifications so you do not miss out on any videos we do because there might be a couple of videos we'll do here at the museum because there's just so much this museum it has over 300 planes throughout the entire museum it is freaking crazy um so yeah, with that, we're gonna head inside, get out of this freaking wind. I'm sorry, the audio is bad. It's been the wind is yeah, terrible out here. It's, it's the wind. Audio. But yeah. Also, in the comments below, let us know what your favorite uh, model of plane is, because we're kind of curious. But with that said, we're gonna head inside right now, and we'll get see out of this get wind. In there. Alright guys, we're here in the museum now. We have to talk kind of quiet. It is very, very crowded here. But here we have the first plane that we're looking at here. This is quite a early model. It kind of looks, it's actually, I think the right, this is the right big flyer. It kind of, it kind of looks like those like random, like old whimsical attractions you'd see back in the 1800s where it was like, um, just out of place and super weird, but um, this is a um, replica of the uh, Wright Flyer, yeah. uh, the first airplane. Yeah, because the real one is actually in Washington, Washington D.C., I think. But yeah, yeah. This is just the beginning. There's so much more in here to look at. You can also see up here another version of the flyer. It had wheels. <laughs> yeah, this one had wheels, but. You see, there's so much in this museum. If we tried to, we would be here for hours because there's so many things all around in the museum, like these displays you could read. You, I mean, you could spend a good couple hours in here. Just, just this hangar itself, it, it, it's ridiculous. But we're gonna head around and we'll continue to explore. All right, guys, we're sitting over here, just looking at a lot of this stuff here. It's ridiculous. There's so many boards with, with tons of stuff. Like this one is just talking about the Wright brothers and their whole time making these, uh, making their plane. I mean, there are hundreds of these big billboards all around in this place. I mean, you have some more stuff right here. We have the control system of the Wright B Flyer, which is really cool. It is, uh, yeah, it's quite cool. All right, guys. Right here we have the um, the wing ribs of the 1908 uh, mil the right 1908 military uh, flyer, which is really cool. You can kind of see a picture here that kind of gives you an idea. That's a picture of um, Wright working on them on these ribs, so you can see an accurate picture. That's what these are. All right, guys. So we're looking here. This is the Curtis Ox Five engine. This is kind of what a World War One plane engine would look like. Definitely different than what you'd see in planes of today, no doubt. You have this one over here too, the uh, Curtis V23 engine from 1916 to 17. I mean, definitely not what you expect to see today. <laughs> Yeah, here we are guys, this German triplane. It's kind of hard to get an angle, it's kind of up high here. You can get over here a little bit and get a nice, try to get a view of it. I'll explain how this works. Go ahead, Chase. So, basically, the whole idea of this, it's essentially just a biplane with an extra wing on it, but the idea was you'd have more lift coming off of it. So, you could do maneuvers that were like really outlandish. You could spin flat 180 degrees in these things. It's kind of ridiculous. The 13. All right, guys. Here we have a couple of World War One biplanes. You got a, a Halberstadt right here. 
won't remember the exact number, even though it says it right there. And then over here, you have a SPAD 13, and you'll recognize it as if you're up in the like fighter pilots who was most famously flown by Eddie Riffingbacker. Okay, I'm sorry guys, we have to show you this. It is the Kettering Aerial Torpedo Bug. <laughs> this is... <laughs> this is quite a small one. <laughs> it's a literal flying torpedo. <laughs> okay guys, this is interesting. So, you can see here, a plane. I don't know the model, but then what's cool is down here they have a skeletal, a half, half of the plane is a skeleton. So you can see what it what makes up the plane, which is actually this plane right here. Very cool. All right, guys, this is cool. We have a World War One, World War One medic truck here. Let me zoom out if I can. This is a Ford Model T ambulance from World War One. They have a couple of vehicles like this in the museum. It's mostly aircraft, but they have a couple of these, like over here. Another interesting truck that is used to move stuff. Very interesting. Uh, guys, I just want to say real quick as we're walking through, we're not showing every little piece, every single plane, because there's so much in here. You just have to come here for yourself to see it, because there is hundreds and hundreds of things in here to look at that it would be too much for a single video. Alright guys, we're looking here at near the end of the pre-war slash World War One section. You're starting to see some of the World War II models that are coming into place here. This one is the uh, Northrop A-17A attack um, aircraft. You're starting to see some of the World War II models are starting to become, come to life with these like starting planes, but I, I don't think these guys are having a good day right now. That doesn't seem like uh, the way a plane is supposed to be sitting. Uh. <laughs> uh, so over here, we have a pretty hard hitting plane here. We have the Hawker Hurricane. Um, designed for aerial dogfights, ground attack, reconnaissance. The whole spiel is, was best used as a ground attack aircraft because you could fit 20 millimeter cannons on it. It would absolutely just decimate um, ground forces like tanks or sometimes troops, sometimes trains. Stuff like that. All right, so. All right, guys. We have just moved on from the pre-war section. We are on to probably our favorite section of the museum, the World War II section. And we're already starting off on a bang. Got it. What appears to be, so what we have here is a natural um, Japanese war objectives, the area around their empire, that type of thing. When they were at full spring, they were all around the this is their circle. This is all their big circle. This is how big their empire is. Pretty sizable piece of planet for an empire that had a lot of issues with logistics. Yeah, um, definitely. Over here we have the uh, uh, small board about um, the attack on Pearl Harbor. Mm -hmm. um, this is interesting here. It looks like a fighter uniform from somebody who was in the. Uh, in the attack, was it a U.S. fighter that is? So over here, we have some more boards about um, Pearl Harbor. And all that. But this plane specifically, the, the plane in this shot here that we're showing you is a P-36. Um, if you've ever heard of the P-40, um, this was the precursor to that. It was the first in the line of the Hawk planes. Alright guys, we're coming up to this really cool thing. This is a display for the first ace of World War II in the U.S. This is Lieutenant Boyd D. Buzz Wagner. He was the commanding officer, officer of the 17th Pursuit Squadron in the Philippines. He's got his uniform right here. The first ace of World War II. Very interesting. You see here, he has a 
purple heart. He has a distinguished flying cross. And then, of course, you can see his bronze stuff. Very Then you can see his flying wings. His air corps wings. Alright. So, up here. Um, this is another uh, big map of the whole of the Empire of Japan. This is under full power. Very helpful to And actually, you can't see it that well because of the flare, but up there there's three islands, Matsu, Kiska, and Akatsu. Those were part of the island chain called the Aleutians, and that was Alaskan territory. So they actually invaded and took those islands for a little bit. That was the only time where American territory on the mainland was uh, occupied by an enemy during World War II. Okay guys, so this is pretty interesting. This is a pilot's navigation kit uh, of World War II, World War II period. With the, the navigator's model A-10A sextant of the World War II period, which is about, which is this. What a sextant is is essentially something that just allows you to navigate easier. It was a small rudimentary tool. Um, forgive me that I don't know exactly how it works, but it was just used to navigate. It was a navigation tool. So over here... Uh, but this is interesting. But this is what is known as an Enigma machine. It was a code machine and it was meant to... It was a German code machine and it sent secret messages across, you know, the German... Uh, chain of command for like weapons or tactics or just battle planning. Yeah, you know, they actually had a hard time cracking its code, and the British came up with something that um, was able to break it at Bushley Park. Interesting. And actually, the first one that was captured that would allow them to do this was out of a German submarine in, I believe it was the North Sea, they were able to... North Atlantic, yeah. Yeah, they were, basically, what happened was the British were able to make a um, bunch of Germans in this U-boat surrender, and before the U-boat was scuttled, a bunch of German, or a bunch of British guys got into the inside and were able to get a code book and an actual machine out of it, which helped them, you know, shorten the war by at least yep. two or three years. And here you can see, what a, an Enigma uh, code would look like. I mean, that, I, I could not tell you what that is, but that's what a sample of Enigma uh, encoded code, would, uh, encoded message would look like. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment where I geek out. So over here, we have what's probably my favorite aircraft of all time. Mitsubishi A6M0. Um, it was the main aircraft the Japanese used for fighter operations during the Pacific from 1940 till the end of the war in 45. There were eight known variants that existed. This is the main one, the A6M2. Um, 1,000 or so horsepower engine to go about 315 miles an hour, 315. Um, it was extremely maneuverable and it plagued the United States Navy and pretty much any Air Force for about a year and a half. Okay, so over here we have what is known as an A-24. Um, they were essentially a different version of the SBD. It was like an army SBD Dauntless. Essentially the same thing. Um, carried a lot of bombs and it was probably the most devastating dive bomber we ever had in the Pacific because it sunk four carriers at the Battle of Midway. Alright guys, we're here at one of our favorite uh, airplanes here in the museum, the B-24D, the strawberry B word. I'm not going to say the actual word, uh, because if we do, we might get demonetized, but a very iconic plane here at the museum, the strawberry B word. Very famous bomber. You see the, right here, the Liberator. 
if you can read that if you want to Ah, I gotta say, probably one of my favorite of the uh, planes here. And totally not because of the name. <laughs> All right, guys, we're coming up to a very iconic plane, the Memphis Bell. Look at that, baby. Oh, what a beautiful air. Beauty. So glad we got it in the museum. Such a beauty. I'm gonna go in there and look around inside because there's so much about this plane to look at. All right, guys. First of all, you can see just in there is the Bombay of the Memphis Bell. You kind of see. I don't know if you can. There's a bomb up there as a display. Very cool. Alright Chase, what were you going to say here? Alright, uh, sorry for that yawn there. Um, but over here, so what the Memphis Bell's plane is, is actually a Boeing B-17 um, flying force. It was the literal workhorse of the Army Air Force's bombing during World War II. It carried about 17,000 or so tons of bombs. I'm probably wrong about that. The, um, carry an awful lot of bombs. Okay, I was wrong. 8,000. Um, about 325, um, 37,000 or so feet. It was ridiculous. This, this plane is a freaking iconic plane. Definitely a true statement. An American icon. Here, you can even see all the missions they Yeah, right down here. So it's all the missions that they had. Very, a lot of missions. That's why it's so famous. As we're coming in here to the uh, Memphis, but you can see there's a whole bunch of stuff about the area. About this whole legacy that was left. You can see all of the um, crew members in here in the over here in this um, plane. They have all their stories. There's quite a lot. I mean you could sit in here for at least like 30 to 45 minutes at least just looking at all this stuff. You can see some of the uniforms over here as well. It's so cool. I, all right guys I gotta show this. Don't mind the big swastika in the background. A Luftwaffe helmet here. Part of the German Air Force. Actually, this is Luftschutz. So this is the German air defense uh, that you'd see scattered around the country of Germany. Uh, you know, you'd see all these like different um, fly towers and stuff like that. That's what these people would be uh, doing. is sitting here on the flat guns. These are the helmets they would wear. Very interesting, though. And here we have, you can see a couple of German uh, fighters. They have the FW-109 or the Fuckable 190, uh, the BF-109, and then the BF-110. You see oh, some of these. Because obviously some of these are no longer available in life, in you know today's world to actually see. But pictures can still and still give us just a little inkling of what these would like. So over here, you kind of see it, but this is a um, diagram for uh, targeting the B-17 from the Luftwaffe. They use this to point out their weaknesses, where they were strongest, where they were weakest, where they could shoot, where to avoid, that kind of thing. Pretty damn cool if you ask me. All right guys, this is kind of neat. We just came across this. An A2 jacket and trouser worn by the 8th Air Force. Uh, turret gunner, ball turret gunner, Sergeant Richard Benson. They like, wrote all, like a trophy. It's kind of like a trophy uh, pants. You got all the places they went to. You know, they went to Dresden, they went to Hamburg. Uh, Geisig, Schweissenham. 
places. All these different places. They wrote them all down. It's very cool. Alright guys, this right here is actually a turret gunner. This is the top turret of the B-17 Sperry. Not a lot of room in there for you, but I mean, it's better than the ball turret gunner. <laughs> Alright guys, now this, this is quite the gun right here. This is a German Flak 88, uh, 88 millimeter Flak 36 cannon, excuse me. Look at this baby. So this is kind of the things you would see along the Atlantic wall. Uh, they would have these as air defense, and also these were on the flat towers that you'd see around Germany and Berlin and stuff like that. This was, whew, quite a big boy, I can tell you that. <laughs> it is a big one. You can imagine standing next to this when it fires. Just so you guys can see, this is what the uh, round looks like. Uh, <laughs> this thing is huge. That is a massive round. And that's what this baby would fire. Alright guys, this guy was not having a good day. That is a uh, an American flag helmet with a massive bullet ruined straight through the head. Here, probably one of my favorite aircraft ever. We have the Lockheed P-38 Light, powered by two Allison V-10 engines. It could go about 390 to 400 in 10 miles an hour, and it is heavily armed. It's got two 20 millimeters and two 50 calibers on it, and it's most famously known for shooting down and killing Admiral Izuroku Yamamoto in the Pacific um, during Operation Vengeance during, in 1943. Alright guys, now this one, this is, this is down my, this is, in, you know, down my alley. This is the Douglas C-47. You saw these on D-Day when they were uh, delivering all the paratroopers to the drop zones. It's very, very, very iconic. Unfortunately, there were, was a B-47 uh, that came through Dayton. It was in, it was in Xenia, Ohio. Uh, we could have come and tried to uh, fly in, but unfortunately, it got sold out like incredibly quickly. So there was no way to get in get a spot, but it was still cool. But oh, such an iconic plane! So along with this beautiful C-47, they have a full paratrooper uniform here. This is, I believe, is this an 80 second? No, this, this is 80 second. Yeah, but this is also a. Um, Pathfinder, you can see from the radio and massive antenna they used on when they got to the ground. But what a beautiful, beautiful piece! You got the reserve chute, the parachutes behind, your zip bag, the very, very hated lay bags that you'd see. You'd see another one over here, a British lay bag that a lot of Americans lost when they dropped because they really were the worst. They just fell right off their foot. And then right here. That right there is a field radio. It's very cool, I love this. All right guys, so I could not go without recording this. The V2 rocket, one of Hitler's vengeance weapons. I had to, I had to pull out the, uh, the wide ankle lens so that I can get this whole thing in frame. Even then, parts of it are not fully in because it's just so freaking huge. But yeah, one of Hitler's uh, vengeance weapons. Fun fact about it. So, fun fact about this thing is that it's actually the first man made object to reach space. Yeah. Alright, guys, and continuing here, we have the ME 262, the first jet powered airplane. And see, it's. Right there, you see it's all oh, it's, it's engine here. Very cool. And then to finish it off, this little baby, the ME-163B Comet. So very interesting. Those are some of the um, vengeance weapons that Hitler's Reich was trying to manufacture at the end of the war. Of course, they didn't get used, but still. 
Well, over here, we have what is probably the great, most iconic combat aircraft of all time. The P-51 Mustang. Um, oh, pa beauty. Powered by a Packard Merlin, and then a license-built Rolls-Royce for Merlin. It could fly about 437 miles an hour. It had 650 caliber machine gun. It was extremely fast, extremely maneuverable, and it hit pretty hard. You combine all those three, and it essentially became a one-man death machine. It's literally, it's so iconic, it isn't even funny. Beautifully made aircraft, served in both theaters. Absolutely amazing aircraft right here. And of course, guys, we could not come in into the area of World War II and not check out Boxcar. This was the second plane that dropped the second atomic bomb on Nagasaki on August 9th, 1945 at 11.01 a.m. Um, kind of a hard thing to talk about, but iconic plane. Nonetheless. Ended the war. Uh, and over here, we have replicas of the two atomic bombs that were dropped. We have Fat Man over there. And then right here is Little Boy. This one was dropped by the Enola Gay on Hiroshima a couple days before Boxcar. Controversial yet very amazing. These are a um, list of Japanese aircraft armaments, sometimes Italian aircraft armaments. But over here, 12.7, it's a crowning kind of gun. It's a Japanese kind of gun. Here's a 37 millimeter cannon. And then here's a 30 millimeter cannon over here. Look how big this thing is. It's insane. Shoo! Final plan for this video. This is the M1 K2 um, Shidenkai, um, Alec Codename Jewel. It's essentially a better um, zero. Um, it was quick, it was maneuverable, it was heavily armed, um, carried 20 millimeter cannons. And it was used primarily in the Army Air Forces, but it was also used as kamikaze air force. Alright guys, that is going to do it for the first part of this museum. There's so much here we had to put it in the two. So, first part here was the pre-war and then World War II section. The next part is going to be the um, Korean War and the Vietnam War. But that's going to be another video. If you guys did enjoy the video, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you do not miss out on any future uploads. And... Again, let us know in the comment section below, what is your favorite airplane model? Mine, personally, uh, A6M0. <laughs> yeah. How about you? Going basic, I want to say the, the Marine Spitfire. Not bad, yeah. sir, not bad. Well, that's it. We'll see you guys back here at the World War History Bar in our next video. Peace.